Hello, grade 12 psychology class. Welcome back to another lecture. We have lesson five, and then this is perception part one. You'll notice a pattern. There's gonna be a part two, so let's do it. Uh, perception. Um, so people do not usually experience colors, noises, temperatures, and pressures. Rather, we would see a car driving by a building and feel the wind from the car and hear the rumble of uh, the tires and hear voices and music coming from the car. Uh, we might feel pencils, desks, and physical contact. Not every, like, oh, I'm touching it with five fingers and they have this much pressure and it's this temperature. We do not merely have sensory experiences. We perceive objects. We perceive events. Uh, so the brain receives information from the senses and organizes it and interprets it into meaningful experiences. This is all done unconsciously. And this process is perception. So we take our senses and we unconscious, unconsciously decipher them until we perceive the world around us. So I don't just see black and white and green and red in front of me. I see a computer, right? I don't just see white and black. I see blinds in a window. Um, we put all these things together to perceive something. So gestalt, or gestalt, is the brain making sense of the world by, by creating a whole structure out of bits and pieces of information in the environment. So each hole that is organized by the brain is a gestalt. Here, the whole is more than the sum of the parts. So we take all the information and I put it together and I see a computer. Uh, that is a gestalt. It is um, how we organize information and how we make sense of the environment. So the gestalt principles of, of organization help explain how we group our sensations and fill in gaps to make sense of our world. In music, we don't hear just single notes all jumbled up. We hear groups of notes and chords based on their closeness or proximity to one another in time. We hear melodies, not single notes. We hear harmony is not a, a jumble all together. So um, all of the notes that we hear would be sensed by us, but how we put them together and how we're organized, that's a gestalt. So there's a couple of rules and there's actually more than this, but we'll go through a few here. Uh, if we see dots grouped like this, we don't like count them. We see groups of two, right? We don't see a group of 12, 14, sorry. <laughs> We see, we see groups of two. Um, we do not see a bunch of open circles and dots, but we see a pattern of two open and two closed. We don't count uh, how many of each right away. Uh, we group them by what's similar. Um, closure, I see right away a star. Even though the gaps are not closed, my brain right away closed them. I don't see five V's all pointed away from one another. I see a star. For continuity here, I see two lines, A to C and B to D. Um, I don't see a line that goes like B to A and C to D, right? Even though that's completely plausible and just as acceptable, uh, we don't like to see disrupted things. We also like simplicity. So I see a rectangle and an oval, as I assume you do, not three different shapes with one being this middle shape, one being the one on the left, and one being the one on the right. We see the simplest shapes that we can. I see two shapes, even though there's actually like three within there. So we organize um, information based on these principles, along with others, actually. These are just a few of them. Uh, one important piece of perception is the figure and the ground perception. So figure ground perception is the ability to discriminate properly between a figure and its background. Essentially, like if a person is standing on a road and there's a field behind them, the ability to distinguish between that person and their background is figure ground perception. When you look at a three-dimensional object against the sky, you have no trouble, generally, distinguishing the object and its background, like a telephone pole or something like that. You can see it clearly, and then you can see that uh, it's definitely different than the sky. Objects become um, the figure and stand out from the background when we have this type of perception. And it is when something um, is two-dimensional 
that you might have trouble telling something from the, uh, telling the figure from the ground. So that might be if you're looking at a picture of something um, or a, a painting, for example, that's in 2D. You may have trouble telling where the background starts uh, and where the um, figure actually stops. Uh, so this is an example here of figure ground perception. There's two things to see. Depends what you want to be the background and what you want to be the foreground or the figure. So when I first look at this, I see faces. Um, you may see a vase. Or now that I know what they are, I can easily flip back and forth. Um, but essentially, if whatever I determine to be the figure is what comes forward, and whatever I determine to be the ground goes to the back. Uh, so this is figure ground perception. Perceptual inferences. So often we have perceptions that are not based entirely on current sensory information. So essentially we make assumptions. Um, when you hear barking as you approach a house, you assume that it's your dog and not your cat or a rhinoceros or even a different dog because you know that you have a dog. You've assumed that this barking is coming from your dog. When you see a road that goes over a hill, you assume that the road continues over, even though you can't see it, you can't perceive it. We have inferred that is there, that it is there from all the information uh, that we have detected so far. Um, so this phenomenon of filling in the gaps in what our senses tell us is known as perceptual inference. Sometimes, uh, well actually quite often, I don't realize my typos. Um, because I just like read through it and I perceive it to be there even if in another there was missing an H I would read it as another and not worry about it I would might I would perceive it to be there I would infer it to be there even though it's not uh, so this phenomenon is perceptual inference so we can learn to perceive and it's uh, what happens as we go from an infant to well a little bit larger of an infant, I guess. Um, we'll talk about a little bit of it here. So, uh, in large part, perceiving is something that people learn to do. For example, infants under one month will, will smile at a nodding object the size of a human face, and it doesn't matter whether it has eyes, a nose, or other human features. It can be a balloon that is nodding up and down. It can be um, just like a circle that is nodding up and down. It doesn't matter. Uh, an infant will smile at it because they are just perceiving that a person is nodding. They can't look at eyes, nose, mouth. They don't see all that yet. Till about 20 weeks. A blank oval will not make most infants smile, but drawing a face or a mask will. So the infant has learned to distinguish something that looks like a person from other objects. They've learned to perceive uh, what the stimulus is showing them. It's not like the stimulus is, has changed. You have not grown a face, right? But they are now able to perceive a face. They are able to understand what their stimulus uh, is telling them. So infants at 28 weeks and older are more likely to smile at a female than a male. They can perceive a female compared to a male by 30 weeks. More infants uh, smile uh, when they see a familiar face than when they see someone that they don't know. Uh, so they're starting to perceive people that stay in their lives compared to people that do not. Uh, people that have been blind from birth and who have their sight restored by an operation, they have visual sensations, but it's not like they can immediately tell the difference between a square and a circle or a red and a blue cube. Uh, be just because they can now sense this stuff does not mean that their brain is able to perceive it or that they, the information is organized in a way that they're able to understand it. As we saw before when we read that uh, piece where the uh, words were all broken up differently, uh, it wasn't in a way that they were able to perceive, that they understood. So we perceive, per perception is learning. Um, when we see something, we take that information in and we learn about it. Okay, so your job here, we've got important terms as usual and then an assignment. Uh, so check it out and if you have questions, please let me know. Thanks so much for watching everyone. I will see you soon.